Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 13 for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series in Godot. In this video, we're going to create a white hit flash effect that we can use when the cannons take damage from the player. Currently, when they take a hit, there's no visual indication that, they, that they've taken any sort of hit, and that will be confusing to our players, so we're going to address that in this video. This series was made possible by the students who support me by purchasing my Godot courses. There will be a link in the description if you want to go check those out. Let's get started. We'll open up the Canon scene and click on the Sprite 2D. We're going to create this hit flash effect using a shader on a material. So come into our Sprite, go over here to Material. We're going to create a new shader material like this. And we're going to create a new shader on it. First though, let's save this material. I'm going to do save as effects material. Save it. We'll attach a new shader to it. It can be called effects material.gd shader. That's fine. We're going to use shader code instead of a visual shader mainly because I'm more comfortable in shader code, but you could use a visual shader for this as well. So I'm gonna create this and double or click on the shader. And now we get this kind of small window here with some code in it. I'm gonna get rid of this for now, clear that, come back to shader editor right here. Now we don't need a vertex shader, this is just a fragment shader. So this will be called on every single pixel the material is on. Fragment will have an output and it's just a color like this and we'll set it equal to some value. So in this case, uh, we could set the output color to vec for 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 and 1.0. Okay, and then we have to do a semicolon here because this is actually not a GD script here. This is their shader scripting language here. So it's going to be slightly different from GD script. Now, if we come to the 2D scene, we can actually see that now every single pixel of our, of our Canon sprite is being output as white, completely white. Now, that's not what we want. We want to be able to uh, only output white when we have a pixel that isn't transparent. That way we can create a white sprite. But in order to do that, we have to get the current value of each pixel on our sprite. And we can do this inside of our shader code using the texture function. I'll show you what that looks like here. So let's do vec or sprite color, or let's call it texture color, texture color. We'll set this equal to texture. And then this takes two arguments. It takes a sampler and it takes coordinates. Now the sampler, um, we just want it to use the texture that is already applied. So we can just type texture and the coordinates are going to be the coordinates that we're already on because the fragment shader loops through every single pixel. We just want to get the coordinates that we're currently on and we can just pass in UV in order to do that. And then we'll do a semicolon at the end here. And if we set our color equal to texture color, what happens? We're just outputting the exact same texture. So we're getting the color of each pixel and then we're outputting that exact same color on each pixel, which is pretty close. Uh, we're, we're getting closer and closer to what we want here. So let's create a variable here for the color that we want our flash to be. Now, in shaders, you can do what's called a uniform variable. And uniforms are kind of like export variables in GDScript. So up here we can type uniform 
And that's kind of like typing export in GDScript. And we'll do vec for, we'll call this flash color. And we can give it a hint, which will just basically make it show up in the editor in a way that we can easily manipulate. So we can do source color as our hint, and we'll set it equal to vec for 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, and 1.0. And then we'll do a semicolon. And this is white, right? So if we come over to our shader here on the right, if we go into shader parameters, we have a flash color that is set to white here. Okay, now let's make a uniform a bool, and we'll make this called flash enabled. And we'll set this equal to false for now. And I'm not gonna touch this variable quite yet, but we'll be using that in just a minute. For now, let's apply our flash to our output color here. And the way we can do this is by mixing them. So we can say color equals mix. And then we can mix the texture color with our flash color. But, and this, this will be the, this will be the actual color that we output. But for the alpha value here, we wanna do an absolute value of sprite color dot a, a for alpha. So that's going to just take the maximum value amount. And I've got not sprite color, texture color, texture color dot a. There we go. Now you can see what that does is it mixes the texture color and the flash color, but we're taking the maximum value of the alpha, which means if the alpha is transparent, then it's transparent. If it's not transparent, then we get this white, which is what we're looking for. So let's create a new output color here because we want to be able to enable whether or not we are applying the flash. We've done a great job of creating our flash here. Uh, another way to do this without using mix actually is just by saying texture color and then, uh, or, or let's see, we would do flash color, but then we would do for the alpha value on flash color. So the easiest way to do it would just be vec for flash color dot red, flash color dot blue, flash color dot green. And then for the alpha value, we'd use texture color dot alpha. There, that's another way that might make more sense. We're just creating a new color. We're using the flash color for the red, blue, and green, but for the alpha value, we're using our texture color. So that's another way to do the exact same thing that might be a little bit easier to understand if you're new to shaders. But the mix also works. I'll leave it as this for now. So now what we can do is make a new color. We'll just call this output color like this, and by default, we'll set it equal to the texture color. But we can say if flash, if, and then we have to use parentheses, flash enabled, and then we have to use curly brackets here, output color equals, and then we can just copy this right here. Paste it right there. That's our output color. And then we'll do output color as the output. So by default, we'll just use the text, this texture color, just the same as our texture. But if flash is enabled, we'll create a new color, which is the flash color that, but it uses the texture alpha. And then uh, we can enable that. If we come over here, we can click on enable or disable. Now we can easily enable or disable the flash on our sprite here, depending on whether we're clicking this. Okay, we've created a nice little shader, pretty simple. And we can now go into our enemy cannon 
and we can use this shader. First thing we need to do is come into our ready and get access to our shader. That way we can manipulate its parameters. So inside of here, we can say right here in the code, we can say var effects material equals sprite 2D. Uh, we need to get access to our sprite 2D. So let's drag this right here. So click drag, hold control drop and say sprite 2D dot material. That gets us access to it. Now, whenever our sprite is hurt here, you know, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. We could do this in code. That's true. But I actually think the easiest way to do this is just with an animation player. So let's add a new animation player. And we'll call this effects animation player. We'll give it a new animation called hit flash. And in this animation, we can start by going to our sprite, coming down to flash enabled, we'll enable that. And then we can key this frame. And for the duration, I'm gonna set this to 0.2. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit here. Set this to 0.1. Come over, uh, turn on snap. There we go. Disable flash and key it again and save. Now it's got a reset by the reset. We want the flash value to be off by default on reset. So here's hit flash starts and then disables and then reset is already disabled. So we've got those two animations. Now we can come into our enemy cannon. We can, we don't actually need access to the sprite anymore. We can drag over our animation player. Same way, click, drag, press control, release. And then here, when we take a hit, we can just say effects animation player dot play hit flash. Let's try this. This is gonna simplify our lives a whole bunch. I was, I was overcomplicating it. Sometimes it's easy to do that. There's a million different ways to do the same thing and sometimes you can overcomplicate them. Perfect. Okay. You might be wondering. <laughs> Why is it making all of the enemies flash, right? Well, we should have learned our lesson by now. We come on the sprite, material is a resource. And again, we could try doing lo local to scene. Let's see if this works. I'm always curious if it'll work since I have mixed results with it but maybe it's just fixed now. Nope. This is why I don't actually use local to scene. I don't, maybe it's because the shape, I did local to scene on the shader and I need to do it on the material. Let's try that. Maybe I just don't understand it. Okay, it worked to do it on the material. So, there we go, we got local to scene to work and maybe that was what I was missing before as I was trying to do it on the shader because the shader is a resource and the material is a resource. You know, just for the sake of learning, I'm going to continue using local to scene on the material here and just try it rather than doing it in code. You've seen both ways now. You watched me set it up the other way. But let's try using it built in here because it makes our life easier. But if you want to do it the other way, then you would just duplicate the resource again. So you'd get access to, in the ready function, you could get access to the resource right here, the effects material. Like we were doing before and then you would duplicate it. You would set it equal to a duplicated version of itself.
But again, let's keep things simple and try it out this way. If we have issues, we can always do that approach later. There we go. Now we have a simple flash material when our player is attacking those enemies. And we'll be able to use the same flash for when the player takes a hit from enemies as well. But we can make the flash color red. That's what I did in my reference project. That's going to be it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and like the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you all in the next video.